Hi everyone and welcome back to The Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. For the first time in my existence with scroller box, I am genuinely struggling with the scroller challenge. I keep coming back to the same idea and that idea is way, 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 way past my skill level and ability. Um, and I can't get rid of it. Once again, in the grand history of the colour cave, I'm just gonna throw caution to the wind. This is, it's complicated, but I just don't think I am quite at the level where I should be attempting it. But if nothing else, I'm gonna learn something from this. So I can't promise you a spectacular piece of art at the end of this, but what I can promise you is an insight into the thought process or, and how far I, and how close I get to what I want to get, if that makes sense. I don't even know if that makes any sense. I'm just gonna grab all the bits and bobs together from the scroller box and then we can get going. I have actually been losing sleep over this scroller challenge. It is quite early on Sunday morning and I actually just want to get this out of the way because um, for the first time in a long time, I'm nervous about trying to do the challenge. Uh, I have made a slight augmentation. I have switched out the Pigma Microns uh, just to two that were already in use. There's no point in starting to use a brand new one when I already had two in circulation. So they're exactly the same brushes. They're not, they're uh, brushes. They're exactly the same pens. There's nothing different about them. They've just uh, seen a bit of use and I've put the new ones into my spares tub. So other than that, everything exactly the same. The other thing that I have made an executive decision on is that when I am finished this picture, if it comes out even half the way I want it to, I am going to go back over all the areas where I use this white pit pen with white gouache. So that I obviously for the purposes of doing the challenge, I won't do it, but afterwards I'm going to do it. Okay, so here we are starting with the Faber-Castell uh, 2H pencil and obviously I'm going to use that to sketch out my drawing. Aside from the pit pen situation, which is a bit kind of strange, uh, the other thing that's really kind of got me with this box is the, the, the prompt and I have been thinking about this for absolutely ages, like seriously. It's, as I say, I've been losing sleep over this, this scroller challenge, which is ridiculous, really. Some of you guys gave me some nice suggestions. Thank you, Yvonne. I liked your suggestion that talent grows. I thought that was very clever. But to translate that into an artwork is, is a different story, let alone translate it into an artwork with very, very limited art supplies. So, and I think that was one of the things that kind of um, got me the most about this was the fact that these particular pro markers, they lend themselves to only certain types of things because of the the very sort of neutral earthy tones of the, the palette. I did do some thumbnails in my... Uh, my sketchbook before I commence this obviously I'm just not I'm not just going blind on this yeah so I just have to get past this like this first bit because I just can't like I don't know whether it's a thing that comes with time or practice or whatever but when I'm doing stuff like this I just can't talk and draw at the same time <laughs> like I really can't but anyway, so the idea for my picture and the, 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 the one that had stuck in my head originally, which funnily enough I have stuck with, is this idea of a mother fox taking her, her offspring out to hunt for the first time. And it's something that obviously for foxes, that's they, they are animals that that scavenge and hunt so it's a really important sort of survival skill for them to learn so it's a huge part of them growing up so that was uh, that was the idea and the the reason that I chose foxes was because of this color <laughs> um the the color spice it just it's so reminiscent of of the color of the foxes around our area and I thought yeah I'm gonna have to incorporate that Right, I'm just going to go for it. I'm probably going to use this entire Micron pen doing this. Uh, this I keep saying Micron, it's actually just a Pigma pen. Micron are the, the fine liners. 
I get bored easily, so I like to jump back and forth between <laughs> between different parts. I do it when I'm colouring as well. You know, if I have a part that's like all the same colour, I do like to move about and maybe jump to another part. Someone once said to me though, when you're when you're sketching, like when you when you learn to draw, it's important that you jump about your picture and you, you kind of finish it all together rather than like starting at one side and working your way across to the other because it means that you um you're paying more attention to the picture as a whole and you, you might spend like ages drawing an ear and you know doing all the shading and everything and then when you start looking at other parts of your picture you realize that your ear is the wrong size and you've just wasted all that time um you know on that particular ear so it's a good idea to jump about apparently okay two layers is better that looks a bit more even i don't know if you can see or not but i have left the like the just the round the moon i have left just the one layer apart from this boo-boo here. Um, I just felt that that was a bit more, I don't know, moon-like. I've been really into my um, my Bob Ross happy little trees this last little while, so <laughs> you can tell that this, this may be some of the influence here. And I thought I would take advantage of this beautiful brush nib to do this. There are there are very few things in nature that are perfectly symmetrical or perfectly matched up. Even if you look at leaves on trees, and you do have to look closely. Now, being a person that spends a lot of time outside, I notice these things, but there are tiny, tiny imperfections in nature. And that's just the way things are, but that's the way things should be. Nothing ever needs to be perfect. Um, so when it comes to drawing things, the compulsion is to make sure that everything is absolutely uniform and, you know, because that's how you make things look like things. But realistically, it's not. Right, my, my only problem just now with this picture is the fact that where I have the moon, put in the moon here, because I gave that two layers of ink, it is showing through, which is kind of a bummer. But I, I kind of wanted these white gaps to show through, to show that the moon is pushing through the, you know, through the trees. So yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna do about that, but never mind. I'm gonna try and use the texture of this marker to my advantage here, because this is obviously a sort of rocky kind of outcrop, as it were. It was really funny last night when I was uh, I was sitting doing the um, the like the thumbnails for this. So I was I was using the markers to try and figure out wh where I was putting what colours. And uh, Mr. Jem came in and he said to me, he's like, God, what have you been drinking? Are you drunk? And I burst out laughing and I said to him, No, that's these markers. I'm sober as a judge. And I did say they were whiffy, so they really are whiffy because he thought I'd been drinking. <laughs> I was like, No, I wish I was, but no. So what I want to do is I just want to add a couple more layers around here because I want to give that impression that the um, the moon is sort of rounded. This is not going to go so well, I don't think. Also, this colour looks really orange on the monitor. It's not orange. Now, this is where it gets really interesting. Oh man, I just realized I made a mistake with the tail as well. I should have left a completely white bit at the end because it's a fox. Come on, Jim. This is what I mean, like, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> Rah. Okay, so, oh, this is just so difficult. This is the difficult bit and I didn't want to do it and that's why I left it to the end with the markers. Right, we'll just get them coloured in. Making sure that I leave all the white bits that are supposed to be white and I can still see my pencil lines through there a little bit so that's going to help me in just a minute. So that's going to need to be like that. There's no white on his legs. Do foxes have white paws? Okay. 
I'm just, I should really just be doing this a tiny little bit at a time till I get it all figured out in my little head. The, the fox cub is at a slightly odd angle as well, which is making my job a bit more difficult here. Um, however, I'm cool, I can take it. There we go, look at that. That's <laughs> Now, I think unless mum is really fat, I did bring her belly up to like here. <laughs> um, that's not in the right place though. I'm just following the line of her. So there's maybe like a tiny little black bit in there. So I'll just use this to, to fill that in. There we go. Which is actually quite good because it helps define the shape of the, the baby um, fox a little bit more as well. He's not just going to like m like merge into his mum. I'm actually putting in more highlights than I should be doing um, just because as I said earlier, it's to kind of like maintain the, the shape of the, the little fox, the wee fox. Um, otherwise it'd just be like a big orange blob because really I'm pretty sure that mum might be blocking most of the moonlight from him but you know hey hey don't discriminate the other thing that I wanted to do was to take the tan again and yeah I know <laughs> Jock's still sighing everyone's sighing I'm sorry oh hello Pippi I didn't realize you were doing my chair I did toy with the idea of using this marker to have the reflection of light on all the, you know, all the elements of the picture, but it's just too much work, to be really honest. Okay, so anyway, I'm going to start here because there's going to be some... In the topmost branches, there's going to be some light reflected, isn't there? Let's try trying to get this exact and it's more fun down here where the you know where you're into the actual black. Right, okay, so this is looking a bit more the way I wanted it now. It's never going to be perfect, but um, it's all good. So I'm going to go in with the tan one again and I'm just going to sort of try and... Uh, oh, this also gives me an opportunity to cover up my mistakes. Like just to make it a bit more like the... Look like the moon, you know? I just wanted to add a bit of interest here because it does take up quite a large chunk of the paper. Just by keeping the, the spice colour to the, the foxes over here, it kind of like gives a focal point and because that is obviously the main the main focus of the picture really. Alright, so I'm gonna move down here to these poor defenseless little bunny rabbits that just don't know what's gonna hit them. So I'm gonna draw them in solid. Now again they're you know they're probably gonna have some sort of reflection from the moon but they are far far too small for me to be worrying about with stuff like that so we'll not worry too much this one's standing up got his hands out and everything maybe he's washing his face if you haven't seen a, a rabbit on its hind legs washing its face, I strongly suggest you get onto YouTube right now and find a video because it is possibly the cutest thing you will ever see in your entire life. Yeah, I'm just going to add in some more rabbits. I'm trying to get them to look kind of rabbit shaped, that was a good idea. Oh, here's another one washing its face. What's going on? Is this like the National Face Washing Convention for Nocturnal Animals? Okay, that's it. Uh, that's gonna about do me. But what I want to do is just to like anchor them to the, the the paper. I'm just gonna give them like little, little line shadows like this. I think 
kind of look like they're in water. Oh, good God. Ah. Oh, Lordy. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm going to take this tan pencil again. And, pencil. I'm going to take this tan marker. And do you know what's really annoying about these markers? When you're using the fine nib, you've got nowhere to put your pen lid. That is, uh, that is the sole reason for me stopping using pens. It has been known. Um, and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to put in like a little bit of like darkerness in here to denote the fact that I'm acknowledging that the light maybe not be reaching these points just quite as intensely. I also managed to give myself like a funky tattoo on the edge of my finger. What's that all about? I, I was putting coal on the fire and I thought it was like dirty coal but it turns out it's actually ink. Anyway. I really don't know how far I should be taking this round the bum. <laughs> oh, the way around. I don't want to dig it all the way around though. That seems rude. See, I'm quite happy with that. It does look, 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 look it's a mess close up though. Oh my God. Uh, maybe I'll do a little bit down the tail here. Again, like mum's gonna have a black nose. That is just the way the world works. She actually looks like Lassie. Just, let's just pause for thought a minute there. She looks like Lassie. Instantly regretting this. And then we can like... This one. Make it like less obvious. The other thing I need to do as well is I just need to give them some like some shadow under their selves, their good selves, because otherwise they just look as if they're like floating about on this on this bit of rock here. So mum's paws are gonna be somewhere under there too, so I better make that thicker around there. Alright, I think I'm just going to leave it be. I don't think I'm going to do much more to make that any better. It's just going to get worse. So, there we go, everyone. <laughs> do you know what I am going to do? This is really bugging me. There's like this white bit down the side. I'm going to just have to like fill that in. See if there's anything left in this old girl. Oh no, there we go. Still plenty of ink left. I suppose I better put my name on it somewhere. I've changed my signature um, on advice of my mother to the one that I used in the watercolour painting. So there we go, that'll do me. <sighs> so there we have it everyone. And in this challenge we have successfully used a 01 Pigma Micron. We have successfully used our Pigma brush marker. Our three pro markers in varying colours, namely Spice, Blush and Tan. We've also used our Pit Pen and of course we sketched out with our Faber-Castell 2H pencil and that is the job done for the prompt growing up. This was really difficult for me and I, yes, I mean I did, I'll admit I lost sleep over this. It's not turned out exactly the way I wanted it to. Um, I think I should have put a bit more thought into the texture for the rock. However, I am reasonably happy with the way it's turned out. And to be perfectly honest, I'm just glad that it's over. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed um, watching along to see what I was going to do with this prompt. And uh, we shall see you soon in the cave for some more shenanigans and playing with art stuff. 
If this has served your entertainment, I would love to see some of your comments and you can always hit the like button too. Check out some of my other videos here and if you want to see more of the same, you can hit that subscribe button too. See you soon guys.